Welcome to Bible Essentials. My name is Sarah Ruff. We are finishing up the study of Zechariah today. We are reading chapter 14, verse 1. Let's begin reading. It says, A day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided in your presence. Notice we are talking about Judah. And it says your plunder. Notice they will have plundered. I talked, I told you earlier on in the study that there is a time, Ezekiel records it, Isaiah records it, um, that there is a time, Revelation records it, but there's a time that Israel will be very wealthy, live in security, and before Christ comes and destroys it for a final time. So notice it says, your plunder, which you have plundered, the things you have gotten, will be divided in your presence. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem for battle. And notice I, the Lord, is going to gather these nations against them for judgment. Remember, he will judge them. The city will be captured and the houses looted and the women raped. Half the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be removed from the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations. So he's going to send the nations against Jerusalem, but then he is going to go out and fight against the nations. As he fights on the day of battle, on that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. The Mount of Olives will be split in half from east to west, forming a huge valley, so that half the mountain will move to the north and half the mountain will move to the south, creating this valley from Jerusalem to the, to through the Mount of Olives that will be split. You will flee by my mountain valley, for the valley of the mountains will extend to Azul. Where that is, I don't know. I couldn't find it in scripture. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Well, that was my question. How did they flee? Well, it never mentions in Bible. In fact, this earthquake that happened at the time of King Uzziah is only mentioned once. Then the Lord my God will come and all his holy ones with him. Well, who are the holy ones that the Lord is going to come with? Well, let me read you a couple verses. There are several, but I'll just read a couple. Luke 9, 36 says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and that of the Father and the holy angels. First Thessalonians 2.17 says, and to reward the rest of you who are afflicted along with us. This will take place at the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven with his powerful angels. Mark 8, 38 mentions Christ coming with his angels. Matthew 16, 27 mentions Christ coming with his angels. So Christ will come with his angels to fight against these nations. Verse 6, on that day there will be no light. The sunlight and the moonlight will diminish why? It will be a day known only to Yahweh without day or night, but there will be light in the evening. I believe the sunlight and the moonlight will be diminished because it will be the light, the glory of Christ that will overpower it. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem. Notice living water will flow out Jerusalem, half of it toward the Eastern Sea and the other half to the Western Sea. In summer and in winter alike, there will be no dry season or rainy season. This, this water will flow regardless. On that day, Yahweh will become king over all the earth. And you will find out that he's not the king of all the earth. There are other kings. There are other nations. But he will be the world power. He will have influence over the whole earth. Yahweh alone and his name alone 
All the land from Gibeah to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem, will be changed into a play. There's going to be some topography changes here. But Jerusalem will be raised up and will remain on its site from the Benjamin Gate to the place of the first gate, to the corner gate, and from the Tower of Hanel to the royal wine presses. People will live there and never again will there be a curse of destruction. So when Christ come with his angels and he is he has come to this earth and living water is flowing out of the the um temple people will live there and there will never again be a curse of destruction. So Jerusalem will dwell in security once and for all. Let me read to you a couple verses about the mountains being raised up. Malachi 4, 1 through 3 says this, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established at the top of the mountains and will be raised above the hills. Peoples will stream to it, and many nations, nations, there will be other nations, will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us about his ways so we may walk in his paths. For instruction will go out of Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Listen, verse 3, he will settle disputes among the peoples and provide arbitration for strong nations that are far away. They will beat their swords into plows and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not take up sword against nation and they will never again train for war. So notice from this, yes, Jerusalem is going to be raised up and nations, strong nations who will have kings will come and seek the Lord there so they can walk in their paths. Um, it also says that he's the, the Lord Jesus is going to arbitrate, provide arbitration for strong nations. He's going to settle disputes among people. So it's not going to be a perfect place. Not going to be a perfect place. All right, back to um, Zechariah verse 12. This will be the plague the Lord strikes all the peoples with who have warred against Jerusalem. Are you ready for it? Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet. Their eyes will rot, some of your Bibles will say, a melt in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day, a great panic from the Lord will be among them so that each will seize the hand of another and the hand of one will raise against the other. Do you know what that is referring to? Let me read that to you. What does it mean when a great panic um, on that day, a great panic from the Lord. It'll be from the Lord that will be among them so that each will seize the hand of another and the hand of one will rise against another. What does that mean? Well, let me read you a verse here. It says, Judges 7.22 says, When Gideon's men blew their 300 trumpets, the Lord set the swords of each man in the army against each other. They fled to Beth Shittah in the direction of Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Mola near Tabeth. Oh, that pronunciation was bad. Second Corinthians 20, 23, the Ammonites and Moabites turned against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and completely annihilated them. When they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy each other. And that's the picture here is that there will be a great panic between each other that they will turn and start fighting against each other. That is what is being spoken of here. Verse 14, Judah will also fight at Jerusalem and listen, the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be collected. Gold, silver, and clothing in great abundance. That is why Joshua who is in filthy clothes, then is dressed in rich clothes. And that literally means rich, wealthy, because the wealth of the nation's clothes in abundance will be gathered and collected for them. The same plague as the previous one will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the animals that are in those camps. Then all the survivors from the nations that come up 
that came up against Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of booths. Should any of the families of the earth not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, rain will not fall on them. And if the people of Egypt will not go up and enter then rain will not fall on them. This will be the plague the Lord inflicts on the nations who do not go up to celebrate the festival of booths. This will be the punishment of Egypt and all the nations who do not go up to celebrate the festival of booths. Rain will not fall on them. And when you don't have rain, you don't have food, you have famine. And when you have famine, you have death. So it will not be a perfect place because some will not go up to worship the Lord, to celebrate the festival of booths. Now, why? Why do we have to celebrate the festival of booths? Everyone in the whole world will go to Jerusalem to do this. Because if you go back and you study and you understand what the festival booths of booths is about, then um, it's really for the Jews to commemorate the exodus from Egypt. You can read about it in Leviticus 23, 39 through 43. So it was a time when it was a celebration, an eight to seven day celebration. And you they would build little booths to remind them of the booths they stayed in when they left Egypt. And so, the whole earth, every nation is going to be celebrating this. Moving on then, verse 20, on that day, the words holy to the Lord will be on the bells of horses. This is interesting because the high priest alone had a plaque, a gold plaque on his, um, a metal plaque on his turban that said holy to the Lord. And here, not only it's not on the turban, but it's on the bells of the horses. So everything will be holy to the Lord. Everything is going to be elevated, not just the high priest or the priest, but all the things in Jerusalem. The pots in the house of the Lord will be like the sprinkling basins before the altar. They will be full. It was the sprinkling basins that were sprinkled on things to cause things to be holy or to cleanse them. Every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices will come and take some of the pots to cook in. And on that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. A Canaanite is representative of their enemies. It's representative of idolatry and evilness. And there will be nothing like that that will enter the Lord of hosts the house of the Lord of hosts. Now, again, who knows? I've never figured out why there is sacrificing going on when Christ returns and reigns on this earth. There is sacrificing that is taking place. Ezekiel mentions the same thing. I have no idea. If you have any idea or any verses, please let me know. But that is your study of Zechariah. I hope you were able to glean something from this book. In January 2021, if the Lord wills, I will be doing a study of the book of Daniel. And then in the fall, we'll be studying Revelation. I do hope you will subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it because Daniel will help some of what Zechariah sees and some of, of what we've been reading is going to come alive in the books of Daniel and Revelation. You will understand all three of those more after we get studied, done studying all of them together. All right, well, I thank you so much for joining me. As always, contact me if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, and I will respond the best I know how. All right, Ooh, hopefully we'll see you then for our Daniel study. See you soon.